This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories. And welcome to a video I'm going to start doing more of more lore based stuff. I've been doing a lot of reviews and we're doing a bunch more, but I do want to be doing some other stuff that isn't just reviews. So for this one I'm going to take a look at the eight worst things a Joker has ever done. And not only considering in the moment, but also what it leads to. And with it I'm gonna have a few honorable mentions which are crimes that could have made it onto this list if he succeeded in them, but since he failed, they wouldn't qualify to be on this list. And with this, I'm going to put in Emperor Joker, where if he succeeded, he would have been able to basically do whatever he wanted, since he had godlike powers. This is seen in both in the, in the Brave and the Bold and in the comics. You also have Death in the Family, where if he actually, you know, like, cut off everyone's faces, that could have really, like, traumatized everyone for life. And then we have the plot of the Dark Knight, where if the boats were blown up, there would have been an extreme loss of life. And yeah, you can see sort of how I'm going with these, just different ways it could affect people. But let's start up the list now with number eight. And at number eight, I think I'd have to give it to you, is Torture of Tim Drake in Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Yeah, I think that this one is the most extreme since, well, the least extreme of this list, but still one of his worst things because Tim Drake was completely destroyed by this. It took, I believe they said, a year of therapy just to get him back to normal, and after that, even if Bruce offered him the decision Robin back, he wouldn't have taken it because of how bad things were, and it truly just shows how bad these things are. Yes, it was pretty bad, but I think with him being able to get over it and seemingly to live a happy life after, all of this is a really bad thing, I think I have to put it at the bottom of this list. And number seven is Paralyzing Barbara Gordon. And we can also consider it torturing Commissioner Gordon after. And with this, these are some pretty horrible things that the Joker has done. I don't think you could excuse him for doing this. And the only thing that this really is, you know, keeping this down low is because, well, both the fact that the rest of the stuff he does, I think, is a lot worse. But also we have the fact that it really is, besides Marvel being paralyzed, not really mentioned too much. And I don't think we really see the effect on Gordon. He didn't manage to break him, which puts it down between... Uh, Tim Drake one, but still since Barbara is paralyzed for years, although I think it was cured, I'm not sure if it was that or it was just wrecked on that killing joke never happened. We have some pretty horrible effects on Barbara, but still I think that what everything, what everything I have below this is a lot worse. And at number six, I have killing Jason Todd, and with this, I think this is basically a combination of what made the last two, well, get on this list, but way more extreme since he was torturing and horribly, well, mutilating the people on the previous two, but this is something that affected Jason Todd a lot more since he was actually killed by the Joker. And this not only had a great impact on Batman, but also had some pretty extreme effects 
on Jason once it came back to life, and it pushed Jason to becoming the killer he was. And, yeah, this effect on Jason Todd was extreme, and I think that if Jason didn't come back, I think that this could rank lowest on this, since it would still be honest, but it would be probably at number 8, since it just would have devastated Batman, but he was able to partially get past it, and I still think that it's a really bad thing, but I think if Jason didn't come back, he wouldn't have been as high at number 5. I would just say it's his basically entire relationship with Harley Quinn. And one reason I have this over the rest of them is because this isn't a single event. This is years of someone's life and how he's treated her and how she was so blindly devoted to him. She didn't realize it for a while. And it's something to she never did. And when she started to, Joker was able to pull her back in. And that's why I think that this deserves to be here because this is the last one truly affecting just a single person and with how well she is treated here i think that it was just such a horrible thing to happen to her and will be turned to a lot of respectable doctrine to the crazy supervillain harley quinn and that is just such a bad thing to happen to her, but with just the death counts on these next ones, I can't justify putting this up any higher. And at number four, I have basically what happens in the talk show in The Dark Knight Returns, but you can also count what happens at the carnival right after, since those events follow each other, and this is just a crazy example of the Joker's mass murder. He goes and murders an entire studio audience and a good amount of people at the carnival, depending on if you're reading the comic or watching the film. It's a little more in the comic, I think. But still, it is extremely destructive. The Joker shows how he has no mercy in this, and he even uses the police to hold off Batman from stopping him. This eventually leads to well, Joker killing himself so he can have Batman take the blame since Batman did break his neck and have him hunted down so the Joker is the winner in the end. And yeah, that was a really crazy moment. But I think that with this, it, it's sort of, you know, around tied with number three. But I think number three is just a little more of a worse thing for him to do since Punch of the Kill was even more necessary than this. And that is in the murders he committed in the game Arkham Asylum. I don't remember exactly, but I remember he killed, I think, at least a hundred guards, maybe 200? Maybe even 300, I don't remember exactly how many, but he basically killed off almost every Arkham staff member. He did some pretty horrible things. He didn't you know, do a direct mass murder like he did in the previous, but with the effects that this had on people in the long term, since the effects of Joker did in Dark Knight Returns is more of just having Batman's reputation be ruined, we know that he just does so much more. He creates Titan and that helps set up the events of Arkham City, where he is poisoned by Titan and everything does with Scarecrow. And at the same time, although we don't see this in the game, he is torturing Jason Todd, who does manage to escape. And that just makes things so much worse. And like everything he did on Arkham Island 
is just slightly worse than what he did in Dark Knight Returns. Although you could go either way, and originally I had these as the same point, but I felt like that would have been felt a little cheap, so I just put this one slightly over it. And between number two and one, I think you could go either way, but I put it this way because of the long term effects of what the Joker caused in these moments. And at number two, I have him tricking Superman into killing Lois Lane and setting off a nuclear bomb in Metropolis. And this is what kicks off the events of Injustice. And in this act, he directly kills more people than what he more people he kills in the previous or well, the next one. But the results aren't as extreme as what happens in the next one, which is actually a pretty similar event to this. But he creates High Counselor Superman, who is well pushed on by the more evil Wonder Woman, and this version of Superman is a lot more extreme. He kills Shazam, he tries to destroy Gotham and Metropolis, and one timeline he takes over the entire Earth with Brainiac technology, enslaving basically anyone who will not agree with him or work with him, including Batman and soon his cousin Supergirl. And yeah, I think that this is a really that's something for the Joker to do, and just with the high body count, this had to go at number two. And with what everything he turns Superman into, and this is just to literally prove a point to Batman that Superman was not incorruptible since when Joker went and massacred the JSA, Superman was able to stop him, and Batman said that Superman is pure. And that's the entire reason the Joker has for going and destroying everything that Superman is. And that's well, pretty pathetic for him to do. And it's, well, it was a joke in his opinion, but it creates one of the best storylines to exist in my favorite comic series. So I'm not complaining. Finally, at number one, I have creating the Batman who laughs. And first off, the events that the Joker does to get up to this are pretty twisted. I think he does learn he is dying, although I am not 100% sure on that. And to go out with a bang, he goes and basically takes every family in Gotham, kills the parents, and sprays the children with a Joker gas, turning them completely insane. He also murders Commissioner Gordon and puts a lot of pressure on Batman as he forces him to watch as he kills these parents and turns the kids into kind of mini jokers with his gas. He has Batman paralyzed and he's able to get Batman so angry, Batman goes and kills the Joker. And once he does that, attacks and loses from the Joker, that transforms Batman into a version of the Joker having the same morality. And from this he's able to go and murder all of his allies, besides Alfred and Danny and Wayne, who he both breaks mentally and turns into his servants. He then goes and murders the entire Justice League, and because of his actions were so bad and he was part of the Dark Multiverse, his world was going to be erased, but he is then recruited by the villain Barbados and charged with leading his Dark Knights. And he nearly succeeds in conquering the multiverse, where he is eventually defeated by Batman and the Joker teaming up. But then he continues to go on. He goes up against Batman and the Joker nearly kills himself to go and 
put Batman on the same level so we can start thinking like the Batman who laughs. Although this Batman is able to cure himself since he is from the main continuity. He is still able to fully defeat the Batman who laughs, who goes and corrupts a bunch of members of the Justice League, and then is actually able to team up with the villain Perpetua and nearly able to destroy the multiverse again, taking the powers of Dr. Manhattan and just barely being able to be defeated by the Justice League. And although this Batman who laughs does fail many times, and his near destruction of the multiverse twice was prevented, he still nearly destroyed the multiverse twice, and I think that puts him at number one, since the Joker caused all of this by pushing Batman to break him, and knowing, or kill him in, knowing that it will cause Batman to become like the Joker, but just how bad that is, and the fact that the multiverse was nearly destroyed by the Joker doing this and tricking Batman. And Batman the Last is basically a combination of Batman and the Joker. I just have to give this number one. Yeah, I want to know what you think. Don't you think of anything else? Because this is from storylines I have experienced. There are some storylines that I haven't experienced since. I haven't read every comic or watched every movie animated series or anything else. Although I know somebody from the 60s is not going to be making on this, since that's a more, more campy Joker, and this is a Joker who is committing some pretty serious crimes. But yeah, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Legends and Theories. Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment, check out the video on screen, and may the force be with you.